You're under arrest for a sexual battery. Of a minor. Mm -hmm. And In possession of chopper on. Why's your zipper or your buttons down in your crotch? <laughs> well, I probably just forgot. Okay. At any given time, there are criminals out there preying on the most vulnerable across the country. But law enforcement officers are busting more and more suspects showing predatory behavior. We're going to discuss some recent predator busts. And who better to talk about some of these operations than the unflappable and renowned predator catcher Chris Hansen. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. All right, before we even get started, we got to talk about something. An elephant in the room, if you will. We have read your comments, folks. I know. I get it. You hate our studio. The panels are off. They look like they're blood stains. It's too murdery. We get it. We get it. We get it. We actually tried a lot of different versions. I think in one, I kind of looked like I was the emperor of a galactic empire. <laughs> I always try to forget that one, but we tried, we tried, we've heard you loud and clear. And look, our goal is to give you the best experience possible. So what did we do? Oh, I don't know. We just built an entire new podcast studio. All right. So with that, let's go check out the new studio. We never get to give anybody a tour. I love this. All right, let's go. By the way, get a behind the scenes look of law and crime. How often do you get that? We're making our way. Hi everybody. Hello, hello. By the way, I hope you like the studio because I, I don't know what we're going to do if you don't. I really don't. So even if, we'll take your comments, but it's fine. Oh. A little self-promotion never hurt anybody. All right. Are we ready? The new studio awaits. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> hey, Chris Hansen. Hey, how are you? Nothing more terrifying than Chris Hansen just waiting for you. The good news is, is we were waiting for this. We knew he was coming. So Chris, exactly. good to and see I'm you. not standing, but I am Jesse. Going to tell you to have a seat right over there. <laughs> we didn't even plan that. That's how great that is. Oh, it feels right. I couldn't resist. Oh, it's great. Good to see it's you. A nice new studio, buddy. Thank you. I thank love you. This. Thank you. This thank you. Great. So you're our first guest in the brand new I'm studio. I'm honored. Appreciate do you it. like it? I do. I like it very much. It's got a nice touch to it. Great colors. And, you know, look, we know that viewers like to see something different every once in a while. And, it, yeah. and, and people who watch this content think it's easy to just whip together a new studio. Well, it's not. you got to fit it into the existing space of a building in New York City, and it comes with all the challenges attached to it. But I uh, think you know, guys did a great job. Looks looks great. Well, thank you. I mean, look, we want to give the best experience. we got a lot of people online who are not happy with our old yeah. studio. So this is the new one. Perfect. Hopefully they don't hate it and we have to change nah, it again. I but I want to talk to you about what we're here to have you here for to break in the new studio. By the way, Chris Hansen, everybody. You can check him out. He's the host of Takedown on True Blue, the podcast Predators I've Caught. Um, and I'm so happy to have you here because we're going to be breaking down these five big predator catchers from recent cases, and I mean, honestly, who better to break it down than you? So let's get into it. Uh, we're gonna get into the first one right now. This first one is in Cape Coral, Florida in September, 2022. There's a 911 phone call from these concerned parents who believe that this man was inappropriately messaging their minor age child online, and police interviewed them about the situation. Let's take a look. He's not coming in my kitchen. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying. I'm telling you guys right now, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm. This is not a threat. This is not a promise. This is an instinct. Mm. We're there's no more contact. That's death. Yeah, of course. If this man shows up on this door, I am taking that as a threat to my children. Right. I'm pissed because I had a gut feeling and I didn't have enough. That's okay. You and did it. Now it's in front of me yeah. and I'm mad. No, that's okay. I get oh, it. Okay. I'll, I'll document it in my report that he was giving. Yeah, obscene there's... gifts and and he's alluring them with money because they're young adults yeah. wanting it's to like be candy, you know? yeah, yeah like a, i don't know how to explain it like i get that. it if he didn't get to our kid i don't want him getting to another yeah so that's Somebody the whole like point this has been thinking about this longer than just our kid so i'm gonna put in my report that they're interested in working with detectives um i'm talking to this guy because like it's gotten to that point where like if the child was naive enough to go alone with him somewhere like Chris they actually end up working with the child they continued to message with this man on the other end eventually a Cape Coral police officer 
took over, pretended to be the child. Is that typically how it's done? Well, I think it's how it should be done. If yeah. a parent sees this sort of activity online with their child and they report it to the police as they did in this case, it would make sense that the police would then work with the child and the family to take over the identity and create a criminal prosecution against the man who is clearly up to no good. I mean, this guy is a bad actor who's trying to solicit the child for uh, illicit purposes, and there's a record of it. But for the police to take it a step further and go undercover and actually go get the guy, I think that's textbook. That's the way it's supposed to work. And not surprisingly, I think we can all imagine what happened. This conversation quickly became sexual, lasted for several weeks, and according to investigators, the man identified as 51-year-old Reagan Beresford uh, even sent graphic nude photos to, again, somebody he thought was a minor. And they arranged to meet up at this local gas station, but while Beresford was expecting a minor to show up, that is not who showed up. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Put your hands behind you. Get out of the car. Put your sunglasses down. Put your hands behind you. Is there anything on you? You're going to cut me, stick me, or poke me? Go with him. He's in custody. <coughs> no. We're going to walk over here, okay? Put your feet. No weapons on you? No. All right, go ahead and sit inside. <coughs> Sit tight real quick, okay? We'll explain everything that's going on. So, Chris, that actually went relatively smoothly? I, mean, I think I guess, it went very yeah. smoothly, Jesse, because you, you had the police set up the sting operation. They had the evidence, the probable cause to make an arrest, the probable cause to charge this guy with, you know, multiple felonies in all likelihood. And he showed up yeah. to meet who he thought was going to be a child. And armed with all this evidence... They took him down without any fuss, without any violence, without anybody getting hurt. So you have to give credit to this police department, these detectives and these arresting officers for doing it very, very well. I'm glad you said that because sometimes it's the planning that's the most important exactly. thing. You can't just go in gung-ho like and that. And it's, it's, it's the case. Yeah. It's, it's going to the district attorney or the prosecutor's office and saying, look, here's what we got. This is the next step. Yep. And that's why we on our takedown investigations always collaborate with law enforcement. So right. the decoys, the chatters are law enforcement. So there's no question about the the uh, possession of the chats or the chain of custody of the evidence. All that is is protected. And so there's a near perfect prosecution rate because of it. Yes, yep. I want to be as involved as possible. I want to get in the mind of this predator and do this interview. And I'm able to do that still with the law enforcement collaboration that we have. You said it so perfectly because you have to make sure that's an ironclad prosecution. Otherwise, if you because do Because what have home, you done? You've, you've created exactly. a video for clicks right. and views and, and, and potentially profit, but yeah. you haven't created any sense of, of justice. And to be socially responsible, that's what we right. have to do as, as right. journalists, as content creators doing these stories. And clearly serious, we're talking about the charges. Uh, Beresford was charged with traveling to meet a minor, solicitation of a child, transmission of material harmful to a minor. He entered a not guilty plea. The case is still ongoing. I think it's pretty clear that these are very disturbing stories to say the least. And whenever I hear stuff about this, I'm always saying to myself, how well do you really know the people in your life? Who do you let into your life? It's a scary concept to think about, but that is why I wanna to talk to you about our incredible sponsor and partner who may be able to help you out here, Truthfinder. So Truthfinder is a service that can provide actual safety for you guys. And I say that because Truthfinder is one of the largest public records search services in the United States. Their whole goal is to help people like you learn about the people in their lives. And here's how it works. You go on their website, truthfinder.com, and you type in a name. For instance, your new neighbor. And let's say your new neighbor is me, Jesse Weber. Make it easy. You type in my name, and within minutes and a paid subscription purchase, you can access unlimited reports that can include information like phone numbers, location history, criminal and traffic records, including possible arrests and criminal convictions. I don't have those, but you get what I'm saying. You get the point. 
Truthfinder has been partnering with Law & Crime for a while now. We actually use it to research some of the cases that we cover here on Sidebar, but generally speaking, it just can help provide peace of mind when you do these unlimited public record searches. Also, you know what's really useful? From within the report, you can search an address, like your home address, to see registered sex offenders that may live in that area too. That's the point. Unless you use Truthfinder, you may never know the reality about the people around you. Truthfinder, by the way, can be used to look up information about people you meet on social media, new dates, people you're buying or selling to online, the parents of your child's friend. You can never be too careful. Well, right now, here's the kicker. You can get 50% off of your first month of confidential background reports right now. Just go to truthfinder.com slash LC sidebar. Now we're going to go over to a different case. This is out of Michigan. So this is Sandusky, Michigan, August, 2022, where a man accused of trying to pull a young girl into a thrift store bathroom made things a whole lot worse for himself. You see a woman reported to police that she was in the store with her two young children, an eight-year-old daughter, six-year-old son, when suddenly the boy ran up and said that a man was trying to take his sister. Hi. Um, my daughter was apparently attempted to be pulled into the bathroom by a young man here. Okay. Google, man, he's a, he's a I said a young man. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. My, I was right around the corner at the racks where the clothes were. My son came over and told me someone was trying to grab her and take her into the bathroom. Okay. I obviously went over there and he was inside with her trying to get out of the bathroom, crying. That's another reason why I don't believe that he tried to push her out because I saw her okay. in the bathroom trying I to get out. Anyway, he told me that. I would like you to not be around her, please. I've got everything I need from you guys. Okay. Why don't you guys go ahead, just take off. We'll okay. get back with you guys when we have more information, okay? What happened? Yep. What? Somebody uh, hit the works there trying to pull her into the bathroom. Is he in there? No, hey. Is he in there? Stay here. No. Is he in there? I'm going to go deal with that in a moment, okay? Wow, so that's pretty harrowing. Yeah. Have you ever encountered anything like that where we, somebody's we've trying to... We've seen it. We, we've seen cases like this that have developed spontaneously where you've got the more classic sort of predator who's hanging out in places where families may be trying to break a child away from the family gathering and, and take her into a place to you know, catch this child by surprise and commit this heinous act. Uh, we've also seen cases where grooming has taken place between the predator and the, the target where they've been texting while the child is with the family at a store someplace yeah. and tries to get the girl to meet him in the you know unisex or family restroom. I mean, it's shocking. And here you have a very fluid and dynamic case where the father, presumably the father shows up. Now, if you're the dad, you're gonna be mad as hell. Oh yeah. And you're gonna to wanna to take this guy and throttle him. And that's a natural tendency. And the police officer here now has to say, I get it. I'd be upset too. In fact, I am upset, even as a, as a law enforcement officer who's supposed to just investigate this thing objectively. But I'm going to go deal with this guy, and I need you to be here with your family and protect them while I go protect you and everybody else in this community. And, that, and that's that's a challenge because if I'm the dad, uh, yeah. I'm going to whip this guy's ass. Yeah. So just, you know, just throw down. But, but and, the, and that's but the, a natural instinct. But again... If you let that train go too far down the tracks, you're going to have a problem with the prosecution. So you have to yeah. cool it down, as difficult as it is, and say, look, I get where you're coming from. And if it was my child, I'd feel the same way. But let me go deal with this and make sure that we, we do the right thing. You here. said it so right. The problem with that prosecution, also a problem of that person getting in trouble, too. Well, yeah, so. you don't want that. Yeah. You know, and that's the other problem that we see with these vigilante predator catchers is, is they sometimes get violent yeah. with the target. Yeah. And I'm not defending anything that the, the predator has done because it's horrible, right. foul, and illegal. But if you assault them, then you're guilty too. And we've oh, seen yeah. cases around the country where the vigilante predator has been prosecuted or himself harmed in, in a horrible way. Which makes it more important the work that you do, Chris. So in this case, to give everybody what happened, the manager or owner of this thrift store comes out to talk to the officer, relays that uh, they've had problems with the suspect, 19-year-old Andrew Jewell, before this happened. And the officer goes inside to get a better look at the alleged scene of the crime while Jewell tries desperately trying to avoid going to jail. So, he 
does, he had a charge in the pier that he was on probation for four misdemeanor, but he was never charged, and he never had enough evidence for the same thing. Okay. What I see on the camera, and I can forward it to you, is him going in the back, mm -hmm. coming back out, mm -hmm. then looking, and waiting until they came back around. And, and it's right back there in the corner, so I have no clear angle on that. On that. His name is Andy. You know, his information. I'll be getting it from him. Okay, so I got both doors locked just okay. because of that situation. I didn't want to right. escalate. Would you like to go around back and talk to him, or just yeah, well, we can go through you. All right, can I talk, please? Yeah, go ahead. I was in the bathroom. Before I shut the door, I told her, because they pick a free toy. You can ask them up there. I told them that you guys can get a free toy. So they go there, look at the toys. I shut the door. When I was using the bathroom, the little girl walked in on me. And she made it halfway in the doorway. I freaked out and tried to slam the door, and it hit her. That's why she was crying. I can't go to jail, dude. I'm on probation. Please, please. Get off the phone. Please, I swear, I swear to God, I swear to God, I swear to God! Turn around, put your hands behind your back, right now. <laughs> I swear to God! <laughs> I swear to God! I swear! Stop. I swear! You've heard so many people try to explain themselves away in those situations. Well, What'd so many thoughts cross my mind here. One, you know, I've gonna go to jail because you've been previously charged with what a misdemeanor for what I don't know no you yeah. know exactly what it is and it's something very similar to what you've done here the other thing that comes to mind Jesse is that sometimes we get criticized when we show a predator who's 18 19 years old right um, you know still a teenager going after somebody who's you know 14 15 well guess what it's still illegal, it's not Romeo and Juliet, and this is a prime example of why you need to intervene and go after somebody. This guy may not be the sharpest guy uh, in town, but he is just as dangerous as anybody else, and just as dangerous as a 29, 39, or 49 year old, this 19 year old. And clearly, it's not normal behavior to buy a strange child a toy. Something bad was gonna happen if, if the son the other child, the brother, hadn't done what he, he did. By the way, he might have been concerned about a misdemeanor, but prosecutors ended up charging Jewel with attempted kidnapping, attempted unlawful imprisonment, and at the preliminary hearing in December, the victims and law enforcement testified, but Jewel insisted on testifying as well. And you got to get this, the prosecutor, in the end, amended the kidnapping charge to a full-blown kidnapping with child enticement, which our understanding, our understanding carries a possible life sentence. Prosecutors, Jewel, they reached a plea deal, and Jewel pled guilty to the kidnapping charge. He is going to be sentenced in June. All right, so we're going to keep this going now. And we want to go to August 2023, uh, where officers in Stillwater, Oklahoma, went to a woman's apartment. And this was after a very chilling report from her boyfriend. You see, he told police that while she was sleeping, he looked through her phone and found multiple disturbing images and videos of his three-year-old daughter. Hello. Yeah, Ashley. Okay. You Ashley? What's your last name? Okay. Can we put your hands behind your back? Okay. You're under arrest. Pants on. What's that? We'll get pants for you. Where is he? Ashley, do you have any pants? Yeah, let's push around. There's no in the room. So the man told police that he had met Ashley Cheatham there online uh, and she became his girlfriend, moved in with him, and again, quickly moving to get her into cuffs as soon as the doors open, getting her covered up, some pants of some sort to wear. Then it's time to go to jail. Let's see what happened. All right, Ashley. You're, you're under arrest for a sexual battery. Of a minor. A minor. Mm -hmm. And possession of child porn. And possession of child porn. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, Chris, it's not only male predators, it's female predators. Did she uh, seem surprised? I don't think she was surprised at all. She knew exactly what they were talking about, and, and she feigned some sort of uh, disbelief or, or being upset about it. But, I mean, can you imagine the kind of person, Jesse, 
who initiates a relationship and probably along the way had a discussion about, do you have kids? Yes, I have a young daughter. And who gets into that relationship probably with a premeditated uh, plan of taking child porn of that innocent child and selling it online. And that is what it appears was going to happen here. I mean, to do this to a child, to abuse the child, and then to photograph it and create child pornography and sell it to people who will view it, and every time an image of child pornography is viewed, it is the re-victimization of that child, make no mistake. And that's why the laws against child pornography are so uh, strict, and, and the sentences are, are so uh, heavy, because it, it is just the worst, among the worst exploitations of children you can possibly imagine. And the other thing is, there is no question, if you talk to the therapists and the psychiatrists who work in, in prisons, who interview predators who are being honest, who have nothing to lose, they will tell you without exception there is a link between viewing child pornography and offending, acting out. So not only are you exploiting this mm -hmm. poor innocent child, you are fueling this desire and this fantasy that these guys can't control. And that's why we see them show up in our predator investigations, partly. And it doesn't stop there because when the news broke, Cheatham had listed her job as a power, prof power professional at Nakoma Park Elementary mm. on social media. So, of course, that raised a lot of red flags. The superintendent released a statement saying Ashley Cheatham was in the process of being hired by the district for the 2023-2024 school year. All employees are required to do a federal background check as a part of the hiring process. Before that process was completed, a mutual decision to terminate the hiring process was made. Ms. Cheatham never worked for the district, never received a paycheck, and has never been with any of our students. Cheatham was hit with six charges, two counts of possession of child porn, uh, child sexual abuse, child sexual exploitation, unlawful access to a computer, and unlawful possession of a controlled drug. drug. She actually waived her preliminary hearing. Her case is ongoing, but uh, Chris, I'll give you the final word on where she almost worked. Well, I mean, to work with children like that is it's just so, so frightening that somebody could, could actually line up for a job like that. And, and here, uh, you know, I'm not sure the extent to which the potential employer did due diligence, yeah. but, you know, uh, clearly a uh, cursory check didn't do the job here. Thank goodness she wasn't around more children. All right, we're going to continue this on. We're going to go down uh, back to Florida. We're going to talk about this other disturbing scene, this time at a park in Port Orange in 2023. This is when police get a call that a man there was apparently exposing himself. I'm getting the kids out at the same time, so I get the kids out, and I just, I just cleanse one more time, and sure enough, you know, penis is in his hand, phone's out, his pants are down almost to his knees. So then that's when we loaded up and called. Yikes, that's a oh, vivid description. It sure and, is, yeah. Uh, brazen. In daylight, you know, there's a guy with, you know, his kids, and, and this guy is doing this. Uh, you know, what has he done before? What would he do next had he not been caught in this situation? That's the frightening part. You want to hear what happens next? Sure. Okay, so the police, they show up at this children's splash pad area. They find a man, LaVon Glenn, in his car, and he uses what is the age-old excuse, oh, I was just changing clothes in my car. It's yeah. not what it looks like. Let's take a listen. You ever have, like while you were changing, did you have your phone in your hands at all? No, my phone's always up here. Okay. No, I'm not. Well, I think about this now. As long as it's a public place, I can change my clothes, bro. Okay. Nobody, nobody Mr. Glenn, we're not going to ask you again. No, you're not going to take my car, bro. You're not going to take my car again. No, I'm not, man. You're so, not going to take my car again. Get out of the car. You're going to get taped. You're going to get taped. Get out of the car. You're not, man. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. So, Glenn does, in fact, get tased, and that is when he hits the gas, takes off, and the chase is on. Taser, taser, taser! 
Sorry. Wow. So, I mean, how often do you see them run away and police well, have to chase them? he's running because he knows he's going to go to jail for doing something that was horrible. Right. Something that was, you know, intended to exploit children. Have you been in that situation before? Uh, I've seen chases, and in one of our most recent uh, predator investigations, we, in fact, had a guy who, who ran, and they, they took him down. And the reason he ran was because he had done time in prison. He was the son of... Uh, very important people in this community, influential people. He was embarrassed. He was dating a woman who had teenage girls at home, and he was there to meet a teenage girl after a sexually explicit conversation. So he tried to run. And as he came into the house, I said, you don't want to do this. It's not going to work out well for you. And he goes, the sheriff's department takes him down, brings him back. I said, what did I tell you? Oh, no, but the guys run yeah. because they've got something to hide. There's well, no good reason so, to run, Jesse. You know that. they know they're going to get caught. But, yeah. but also in the law, in a prosecution, we call it consciousness of guilt. I sure. mean, it's presented to a jury. Why else would he have run unless he did it? Now, a defense attorneys, it becomes a headache to try to explain it. They go, well, you know, they've had bad interactions with police before. Um, you know, they were nervous about police, but, yeah, but that, that becomes an uphill battle. Sympathetic no. with the defendant. First of all, yeah. he's doing what he was doing, which there is no sympathy right. anywhere in any quarter. Uh, for somebody like that, right? And then he runs and run. For, yep. He takes off in his car, which is dangerous. He could have killed somebody. Then he runs and jumps over a wall. What do you think is going to happen? Yep. He's going to tase you. Well, and he, you deserve it. And apparently he has a long history in the Volusia County justice system dating back to the 90s. And several of Glenn's recent cases, they were consolidated. So he ended up pleading no contest to several charges, aggravated assault on law enforcement with a deadly weapon, his car fleeing at a high speed, exposure of sexual organs, battery on a law enforcement officer, and resisting an officer without violence. He was sentenced in February to two years in prison. All right, moving on. We're going to end today with what is a very odd situation out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. So police initially stopped a driver because his truck was speeding and weaving all over the road. The officer suspected that he had a DUI on his hands, but when he looked inside the car, he found, get this, six teenagers. Hey there. Hello. How are you? All right. Just all right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Should you have a license? Yeah. I did. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I thought you were going to crash. No, I don't. I didn't say. I don't think so. I'm just saying I thought you were going to crash. Okay, and then you have a bunch of kids, and then the car, how many kids? You have one, two, three, four, five, six. Who are these kids to you? Uh, this is my friend. That's your friend? <laughs> yeah. How old is your friend? 18. That girl's not 18? Huh? That girl's not 18? Yeah. No, she's not. No. She is. That girl's not 18. Trust me. She don't look 18. Ma'am, how old are you? I didn't ask you your name. I asked you how old, uh, how old you were. Jeremy, just turn the car off and come back here and talk to me. All right. All those people in the car, who are they? They're just my friends. I, don't, I mean... Do you normally hang out with people who, who are young? Not... Not, how, uh, how old are you? I'm 41. 41? Okay. Hang tight right there, okay? Yeah, I mean, you'll notice that uh, kind of can barely form full sentences to answer the questions. And well, he's it, trying to say as little as possible. Clearly. Yeah, because he's nervous. You know, he knows about, he's in trouble. And, it, you know, it seems that there was, well, it doesn't seem that there was any, you know, sexual impropriety going on per se. He does have six teenagers in the car with him late at night, allegedly been drinking heavily. His fly is down on his jeans, and police would, police would come to learn later on that Guthrie was accused of raping one of the 12-year-old girls in that car and her twin, allegedly impregnating one of them before she miscarried. So absolutely horrific. Well, yeah, and, and you can't make this thing up. And thank God these law, officers, law enforcement officers were on the job that night and picked up on this. I mean, because what's he going to do with these kids? Nothing good. He's already assaulted two of them impregnated one of them i mean this this gets into the level of human trafficking jesse this is a whole different crime now and by the way it always makes me feel like police they don't know what they're walking into they don't and and again this is why 
we need to respect what is a very dangerous job. You know, again, we expect a lot of our police officers. We expect them to be social workers. We expect them to be uh, therapists. We expect them to be superhuman and, and protect us. And not every one of them is perfect, just like not every human being in our business is perfect. But the vast majority go out every night and put their life on the line to do things like that. And those are six kids who will not be sexually assaulted by this creep because somebody was paying attention that night in law enforcement. And that officer lets the passengers know that their guardians are going to have to come get them. He's pretty stern and a little forceful. Take a listen. Right now, right now, you guys aren't in trouble. You guys aren't in trouble right now. What's that? Okay, how old are you? 14. 14. Four, really 14? Yes, okay. 14. 14. Okay. 13. Okay. 13. Okay. 14. Okay. Who's yeah. this guy to anybody? Uh, that's our homies. And then she knows his kid. Okay. So, that there's your homie? Or, okay, so you, got, you, you guys all need to call your parents. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, now remember when I said he was kind of off with his words? Well, another officer tried to put Guthrie through field sobriety tests, but that went just as bad as well as you might expect. Yeah, I had, uh, I had some beer. You had some uh, beer? Earlier. Uh, How many of them? Um, like three. Three? What kind? Three beers. Okay, Chris, before I get to you, got to lay out some of this. So because Guthrie is accused of committing so many crimes, his court case history is a little bit complicated. So Guthrie was in the car with the children on July 5th, 2022. A grand jury indicted him, on, indicted him on six counts of abuse of a child, aggravated DUI, some traffic offenses. And since then, Guthrie entered a not guilty plea. There have been continuances and so on. And we now know that Guthrie is actually scheduled to attend a change of plea hearing uh, tomorrow at the time of this recording, uh, May 30th. Now, around uh, the same time, July 2023, Guthrie was also charged in connection with the rape of the twin girls back in 2021. That case has already gone to trial. And in December, a jury found him guilty of nine of 11 sex crimes that he was charged with, including criminal sexual penetration in the first degree of a child under 13, criminal sexual conduct. He's going to be sentenced in that case in August. So it sounds like we're getting a really bad guy off the streets. It is a really bad guy. I mean, this guy would be in trouble just for driving around drunk with underage kids in a vehicle I mean that's bad enough yeah. and when you combine the sexual assault which is horrendous and, and all these different things and that's what we know about that's what prosecutors believe they can prove in this case that's what law enforcement officers know about and I also have to ask the question where are the parents mm. and why are 14 year old kids driving around with this predator drunk in the middle of the night it's a scary thing to think about, um, but really harrowing cases. I'm glad law enforcement was there to intervene in so many of these, and sometimes citizens there to intervene. Um, but we also know that we got Chris Hansen out there protecting us all, our first guest in the brand new studio. Well, thank you for having me. I'm honored, Jesse. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And also, just real quick, want to thank everybody for our team for putting this whole set together, getting Chris to come on here. Thank you so much, sir. Really My appreciate pleasure. it. Jesse, anytime. You know that. Awesome. All right, everybody. That's all we have for you here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. This is Chris Hansen. See you next time. Thanks so much.